stop, but that stop is basically in order to start again and start with a new beginning, a new chapter. I think I heard or read for both that um, the uh, you know the body is basically powered by the neshama. And the neshama has to has to go up to sort of get its replenishment, and it does that while you're sleeping. So this is that, right. There's different different uh, there's different explanations. But it could have been worked out in a way that just part of the nishama should leave, not the whole nishama. I mean, up there he can manage different things. It's just that this is a lesson for us, and as we see it in factual life, that when a person gets up in the morning, it's with a special enthusiasm, a new day, the sun is shining. It's like a new life, a new energy in the person. In addition to the fact that the nishama is receiving its learning in the, in the, uh, during the nighttime. Okay, now we go on to the different times that are cons- there is a, according to Kabbalah, it is a time of sleep. At night, we know it. The Talmud tells us the night was created, there's a controversy, if the night was created for learning or for studying. There's two, um, uh, two different opinions. One says, Le'ivre Laila Leshinsa, night was created for sleeping. The other one says the night was created le- for, for learning, the girsa. And that's why it's an Indian to learn at night. There's a special point in it, especially after the nights become, when the nights become longer, so to, to also have a set time for designated for studying, studying Teda. One of the times that it takes place according to Kabbalah is every Friday. Every Friday, towards the end of the day, it is called in Kabbalah, Durmita de Zah, the sleep of the attributes that are called Zah. What is Zah? Zah are the attributes that are in all, every world. It's the Eid Anpin. It's the attribute of Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, Netzach, Eid Yusayit. Durmita means an elevation. They are being removed and they elevate to higher. And that is generally what the word sleep means in a spiritual sense. It's removed, like the the function of the mind is not working, it's removed, so therefore the lower part of the body takes over then. Dominates then the, the functions in the body. This is one time, Erev Shabbos. Then comes another time, Erev Rish Hashanah. And Erev Rish Hashanah, there's an interesting thing which is mentioned in Kabbalah, based on what took place by Adam, when Adam was um, uh, given his wife, his wife was given to him then, and that is when he uh, was put to sleep for a while. And that's when Chava was created as part of Adam, from a rib of Adam, and became, this is when basically he received his wife. Is that the first time he slept, ever? So it said over there, Shabachol, he was created on Friday. And he got her Friday. <laughs> so the sleep was in the middle of the day somewhere. It's mentioned, there's, this, there's, a, there's different svarim, it's mentioned the different hours, what took place then. Every hour, what took place. Cheshmer, 10 or 12 hours, what took place. First him, and then this, and then the creations, then the, then the apple, eating from the tree. So it's mentioned in Kabbalah like this, that every Rish Hashanah, there is the same idea of Ayapel Gamer Tardema, the Ebishter threw a deep sleep on Adam. And he took one of his ribs, So, since, what is the reason for that? Because in Kabbalah, in the higher worlds, in the higher spheres, these two, the attributes, also are then, the same way that there's husband and wife, male and female, there is also the attributes in the higher worlds that are called Zo and Malchus. Zo is Chesed, Vurat, Tiferes, like the male, Attributes, uh, and Malchus is the female. And then there is also a, uh, they're separated, they were first born, they created, separated. I'm sorry, they were born first all together and then they're separated. And then again, they brought together the two channels of spheres of attributes. So this takes place every Rish Hashanah. So this is basically the idea of sleep Rish Hashanah, which this answers uh, why we're speaking about sleeping before Rish Hashanah. Now another concept that explains the idea of sleeping before Rish Hashanah, which thinking about the inner 
meaning of what sleep means, which means removing the, removing the energy and elevating, this takes place every year on the eve of Rosh Hashanah. On the eve of Rosh Hashanah, the energy of the whole year elevates to a higher level. It goes back up. Whatever we accomplish that year is included in that energy, and that is considered a, an, an, an initiative, a, uh, a, a uh, finalization, a summation of everything we accomplished. And in accordance to what we accomplished, we receive then the blessing for the new year. So, but, let's not forget again, we're talking here also not only about the activities and everything we did, but the spiritual energy that is sustaining the world goes up then. And the world finds itself in a faint, in a state of faint. What does it mean faint? Like a person that faints, they're alive, but there's no energy. The energy went up and it stays up and when we blow shafer, we sound the shafer the next day, this is when we receive and draw down a new energy. And shafer is, shafer is basically the idea, the shafer is the, the outcry of our initiative asking for a new revelation and begging by the Almighty, he should take upon himself that he should, should accept to become king again. He is asking us, this, we don't, this is before Kabbalah, the Talmud tells us that. The Talmud tells us in the tractate of Rosh Hashanah. In Hebrew it's called, Imru lefonai malchies shetam lichuni aleichem. Say for me verses of royalty in order that you should anoint me upon you. This is what he is expecting, the Almighty is expecting from us every year. And that is why we say in the prayers, Malaycha lo'elam kuli b'chvedecha, reign on the whole world. Because this is what we want him to renew the revelation. We want him to renew sustaining the chain of creation. And this is how we ask that he should take upon himself again to renew his, the anointment and the kingdom over the world. How do we relate to Hashem? Since we need to reach up high, there's no words to describe it. There are prayers. We definitely say the prayers. We go out to Tashlich, we do different things. We say prayers, special prayers and wishes when we eat the meal. The challah in the honey, the apple in the honey, and other things that we eat, foods that symbolize blessings. Carrots, other things that show in a certain way in their name or in their meaning, idea of blessing. Carrots, for example, in, in Yiddish means men multiplying. That's how we eat carrots. Carrots, known as tzimas. All the chefs get to work on this. And uh, it's basically, it's, uh, everybody has it in the house. This is basically the different things we do for a good sign. But in addition to that, the shefer is the highlight of the day. It's the mitzvah sayyim, the commandment of the day. And that is because the shefer has no words, no music, nothing besides a simple sound. And that simple sound comes out from the simple outcry of a person's soul and it reaches the essence of essence above. And that's the only way to reach is basically without words, without logic, just the outcry of the neshama. This is simple, signifying the outcry of a person's neshama, so connecting to higher. So why says that, that the satan doesn't know, he gets confused? It, basically so it is because it is also that, uh, yeah, now in Madrash and other places it's mentioned also to confuse, to confuse the prosecutor, to confuse the, 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 the negative angel. But basically, in, in, in the service of a person to the Creator, as Hasidus explains it, it is basically an out that we're connecting to Hashem on the level of an outcry. No words, no intellect, no emotions, just an outcry. What, is, what are we crying exactly? Just, just, just to reconnect know? again. It is like a father that has left us, and we want to reconnect again. We want him to continue. What about the idea of that we should be forgiven for anything or those thoughts that should not be? Okay, that's life? basically, basically in Yom Kippur is the time that we ask forgiveness. Right. Right, so that's basically the time that's designated for them. Right. And therefore, since it's designated for that, so therefore the connection also then on a spiritual level is also on a different aspect of a spiritual level. But here it's basically anointing Hashem on the other hand, him removing himself from the world to the extent that he's asking us to say verses in order that he should remember us. 
So here comes in the second part. What does it mean forgetting? How could, how could the Almighty forget? We say, There is no forgetting, forgetfulness in front of His throne. So, I'm sorry, I'm one, because I've heard different people say different things. What is a person supposed to think about when he hears the shofar? You know, are you supposed to simply think like what you said, that uh, we're anointing God and hoping that He is, remains our King? Or are we supposed to also have thoughts of teshuva, that, you know, um, that uh, we want to be close to anything that was making us less close should be not part of next year. You know, I mean, what are you supposed to actually be concentrating on at that point in time? Okay, Rosh Hashanah basically is the time of crowning the Almighty. Yom Kippur is a time, a day of atonement. So therefore, your Rosh Hashanah, we're not even permitted to say any confessions because it's a Yom Tif. We just stop short of dancing and singing because it's, it's, it's a day of judgment. But when it comes to Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur is the concentration on confessions that we constantly say, we don't stop saying. You see, to, to my mind, when you're in, in, a, in a point of time with such, such gravity like Rosh Hashanah, why wait till Yom Kippur okay. to, to, to say, you know, please, you know, whatever happened, you know, Right, okay. Because a person should not be saying confessions then, you can only focus on the positive part, which is, I want to reconnect, I want to be stronger, I'm making resolutions, everything of that. But basically, Rosh Hashanah is a time, in Hebrew, it's a very short word, not a short word. It's a, it's a title that encompasses the Rosh Hashanah. Kabbalat Oil Malchus Shamayim. Taking upon oneself the yoke of his kingdom. That is basically what Rosh Hashanah is about. We're committing ourselves again. Because in order to convince him to become a king, we need to commit ourselves also. We have to do something. We have to put in our, our investment in it. So therefore, this is basically committing oneself. But the question is, what is forgetting here? What, what does it mean he has to remember? So the answer is in the same way that we spoke in regards to sleep. Sleep means a person is removed. The mind is removed and is not able, the... the is, is removed from the body in the sense that it's not able to function like it functions when it's up, when a person is up and alert. The same thing is also in regards to shikha. When we say something is forgotten, that means that, that it is not in the mind of the person. It is something that is considered either secondary, or as they call it in today's world, I'll put it on my back burner, or not, not, not important at all. Rabbi mentions already in the 1960s that psychiatrists have found that something that a person doesn't want to think about, he forgets. The same thing is also something that a person is uncomfortable with, they tend to forget. Because it is something that they're not thinking about it. They don't put their whole uh, innermost uh, concentration on that. And therefore it just drowns away and it, 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 it ends up somewhere which is completely not in front of the person. Like we say, out of sight, out of mind, out of... Uh, it's basically, it's not there. What does this mean? Remembering and forgetting is like the front, the face of the person, the neck of the person. The face of the person means how the person is completely involved in it. When a person is involved in it, he remembers it. When a person is not involved in something, it's like the neck that you don't see any expressions of the person and it's not really the pneumius, the inward part of the features and the functions 